cloud loan stood in front of their house looking at the sky. The big silver moon shone overhead. Suddenly Pablo pointed upward and cried, Look, an airplane! I wish I had an airplane. I don't, said Maria. I just wish Nino could fly. Whoever heard of anything so silly? Nino's a burrow. Burrows don't fly. Just the same, said Maria. I still wish Nino had wings on him. We would have so much fun flying all over the world together. You had both better wish your little brother would get well. Their mother had come to the doorway. It looks as though only a feather from the old serpent of the mountain can help him now. How would a feather from the old serpent of the mountain help little Pepito, mother? It is said that the feathers have magic powers of healing. If you place one on the brow of a sick person, he will be well instantly. Where is the old serpent, mother? Maybe we can find him. He dwells at the foot of Shimoko, the fire mountain. When he is angry, he rises to the top and spits out flame and molten rock. But it is just an old tale, my little ones, as likely to be true as that Nino should fly. Come to bed now, both of you. That night, Maria lay in the bed she shared with her older sister Rosalita and her younger sister Mandelita. She could hear little Pepito crying in the darkness. Maria thought about the old serpent of the mountain. She wondered how she could get one of his magic feathers and make Pepito well again. I can't sleep at all tonight, she said to herself. I might as well get up and go outside. As Maria slipped out of bed, her big sister Rosalita opened one eye and then promptly fell asleep again. It's the first night of the full moon, thought Maria. Sometimes on such a night, one's wishes will come true. She shut her eyes and wished with all her might that Nino could fly. Just for tonight anyway, please. Just long enough for the two of them to reach the fire mountain and get a feather from the old serpent. Just then, a soft nose nudged Maria's hand. Oh, Nino, you have wings! Sure enough, on either side of Nino was a golden wing that glittered in the moonlight. But Nino didn't seem at all happy. Now you can fly, Nino, and we can find the old serpent, and Pepito will be well again. Go ahead and fly. Go on, Nino. You just have to try harder. But Nino just stood there, looking bewildered and unhappy. Oh dear, you don't know how. Just flap your wings like this and sort of lift yourself up or something. If a bird can do it and a silly old airplane, so can you. So Nino tried again. I guess I'll just have to get on your back. Maybe this time you'll be able to do it. Maria jumped onto Nino. Go ahead, Nino. Giddy up. Nino gave a tremendous leap. And they shot off into the starry sky. At first, Nino's motion was nothing at all like that of a bird or an airplane. His legs and his wings just didn't want to go together. Maria's stomach kept doing the back fits. She thought they were going to be in for a very rough trip. But after a while, the burrow seemed to get the hang of things, and they flew along smoothly through the star-filled night. In fact, they went along so smoothly that Nino decided he'd try a few tricks. Stop! You bad burrow, Maria scolded. Nino settled down. 
They crossed the path of the moon. They flew over the village as it lay sleeping in the moon. They flew over the bare peaks of mountains. After they had been flying for a little while, Maria realized she didn't know just where the fire mountain was. She wished she had asked her mother. Maria thought they were flying in the right direction, but she wasn't sure. Then as they flew over the ruins of an ancient temple, Maria had an idea. Her mother had told many stories of ancient times when animals talked to people and gave them wise advice. In fact, Maria's uncle Fernando had a parrot who talked. It said, Buenos dias. Nino was following the path of a river that wound its way through the forest. Nino, let's fly down. There are lots of animals there. Maybe one of them can tell us where the fire mountain is. Nino obligingly glided down, and soon they were flying over a thick curtain of trees. Lower, Nino. I'm sure we'll find a parrot. Good evening, Senor Parrot. Can you tell me where the fire mountain is, asked Maria. But the parrot just made squawking noises. Maria and Nino flew deeper into the forest, and in a little while, a monkey came swinging through the trees. Good evening, Senor Monkey. Can you tell me where the fire mountain is? But the monkey just answered in some strange monkey tongue. As they flew on, Maria noticed a flower in her favorite shade of pink. Oh, Nino, fly closer to the pretty flower. <sighs> Maria had just about recovered from her fright when down swooped a big bat. Considerably shaken, they continued on, and after a time, they came upon an owl. Good evening, Senor Owl. Can you tell us where the fire mountain is, Maria asked the owl. But the owl just hooted at them. Maria was beginning to feel discouraged, but they flew on. Then, gliding out of the bushes, what was that? Look out, Nino! There's an alligator! Once again, they flew on. Then, sitting on a branch right in front of them, Maria saw a large spotted cat. Oh, Nino, there's a jaguar. In all of the stories her mother told, the jaguar had always been very wise and powerful. Surely he would tell them where to find the fire mountain. Good evening, most wise, Senor Jaguar. Can you tell me where the fire mountain is, Maria asked. The jaguar just looked at them. He won't say anything either, Maria thought. But then, the jaguar lifted his paw and turned it to the west. Oh, thank you, Senor Jaguar. The jaguar answered with a low growl, and Maria and Nino flew on and up through the trees and out of the forest. They flew on through the night. And then, they saw something coming towards them. Why, it's Pablo's old airplane, Maria cried. It's coming right at us. The pilot was amazed. He couldn't believe his eyes. He had never seen a little girl on a flying bow before. Look out! Nino turned right, left, right, right, left. They were about to collide. Nino dived down and the plane went up. I must 
stopped making these long night flights, the pilot sighed as he flew away. That was a close one, Nino, she said as they continued on. But a change had come over the sky. Clouds were beginning to cover the stars. I think a storm is coming, Nino, Maria said. In front of them loomed a big black cloud that grew thicker and thicker as they flew into it. Lightning flashed and the rain began to pour. It rained harder and harder. Maria and Nino were getting soaked. Then the wind began to rise. Maria had a hard time holding on to Nino's mane. The wind grew stronger and stronger. Nino was racing faster and faster against it. Maria found it harder and harder to hold on. It was a terrific gust of wind. And then, Maria flew off. Nino turned around. Maria was gone. She was tumbling down, down, down. Nino fled down after her. Maria was tumbling down toward the mountain peaks below. Just in time, Nino zoomed under Maria and she caught his mane. In a moment, she was on his back and they were flying back and out of the storm. You are super, Nino, cried Maria. Nino just shook his ears modestly. Now the clouds were breaking up. Ahead of Maria and Nino stretched a line of tall mountains, and beyond them was Shemilko, the fire mountain. Now we must hurry and find the old serpent, Maria told Nino. They flew over rows of taller and taller mountains, weaving in and out among the peaks. The moon had set, and the stars glittered all the brighter in the dark sky. Maria tried to remember what her mother had said about the old serpent. What would he be like? Would he be very big? Serpents aren't usually feathered, but this one must have feathers, since she had to get one. And how would they go about getting the feather? Wouldn't it make the old serpent very angry? And, and then what would he do? Then in the distance, Maria saw a glow in the sky. They were nearing the fire now. And, and there it was, right in front of them, just as her mother had described it. Maria's heart beat fast, and so did Nino's. Curled round and round the mountain was the old serpent. His teeth are awfully big, Nino. Maria looked at the serpent and gulped. We just have to get that feather, Nino, or Pepita won't get well again. Let's go. And down they started. awake and he's angry. But we can't stop now. We've got to get that feather for little Pepito. just about worn out, and so was Maria. But the old serpent was still whirling around. Nino was so tired he could barely flap his wings. It looked as though they would never get that feather now. Then Maria stared. The old serpent was all tangled up, and he looked pretty tired too. Look, Nino, he's tied himself into a knot. Now's our chance. But we must hurry. He could get free at any moment. Once again they started down. 
Faster, faster, Nino. Faster, faster. It looks as though he's getting loose. And then they had it. They had the feather. As they flew away from the fire mountain, Maria's heart soared. They had done it. They had the feather. I hope we didn't hurt the old serpent, Maria said, but I'm sure his feather will grow back again. Once again, they were flying past the mountains. But this time, they were heading home. Maria thought about how wonderful it would be when they got back. The feather would make little Pepito well again. Everyone would admire Nino's wings. Pablo would have to take back all he had said earlier in the evening. And if he asked Maria nicely, she would give him a ride on Nino's back. Now they were skimming the treetops above the forest. Soon they followed back along the river. And then once again they were over mountains. The ancient temple passed beneath them. And they flew over more mountains. In a little while they would be over the village. And soon, they would see their house again. Sure enough, look, Dino, we're almost home. Nino glided down. His flight was much smoother now than when they had started out. The landing was a little rough, but after all, it was Nino's first. Nino, you're the best burrow that ever lived. Now, go and get some sleep. Back in the house, Maria hurried on tiptoe to Pepito. He looked so sick. She placed the feather on his forehead, and then... again, but the feather had vanished. Good night, little Pepito. Sleep tight. Maria tiptoed quietly back to bed, careful not to wake Rosalita and Mandalita, who were still sleeping soundly. She thought about all that had happened. Then she shut her eyes, and in a moment she was fast asleep. While Maria slept, the night sky faded into daylight. Suddenly, it was morning. Maria woke up. She could hear voices talking and laughing outside the window. She threw on her clothes, and in a minute she was in the doorway. Her whole family was there. Her mother smiled and called out, Good morning, little sleepyhead. During the night, a wonderful thing happened. Little Pepito is well again. Uncle Hernando and Aunt Carmen smiled at Maria also, and Sancho, their parrot, called out, Buenos dias! Buenos dias! Aunt Carmen spoke up in her usual bossy way. It was my herbal potion that cured him. I told your mother if she gave some to Pepito, the baby would be well. Uncle Hernando disagreed. I think it was the medicine Dr. Solano prescribed, he said. That's what did the trick. 
Maria could keep still no longer. You're both wrong, she cried. It was the feather that did it. Last night, Nina and I got the feather from the old serpent, and I put it on little Pepito's forehead. That's what made him well. It was the feather. Rosalita broke in. What are you talking about? You've been dreaming. You never stirred from under the covers. You were sleeping so sound last night that you didn't even wake up when Mandalita and I got out of bed this morning. No, no, cried Maria. Nina and I flew to the fire mountain. And she proceeded to tell all about the night's adventures. When she had finished speaking, Maria looked around her. Nobody said a word. They didn't believe her. As everyone looked at her, Maria felt as though she were getting smaller and smaller and smaller. They thought she had made it all up. There you go again, scoffed Pablo, talking about flying on Nino, just like you did last night. You're really crazy, Maria. And Carmen chimed in. You should not make up stories like that, young lady. Uncle Hernando added his voice. You have an overactive imagination, my child. Maybe someday you will write stories. It was a dream, little one, said Maria's father. There was a big storm last night, and the sound of the thunder must have colored your dream. Maria's mother added her voice, and also last night the fire mountain erupted. You could hear the rumbling in the distance. It was very loud. Only Mandelita seemed to believe Maria. Asking, did you really fly away last night, Maria? Yes, yes, I did, cried Maria, and I'll prove it to you. I'll get Nino, and when you see his wings, you'll see. Oh, Nino, where are your wings? Yeah, where are his wings, Maria? Pablo had followed Maria, and now he was standing there. So tell me what happened to the famous wings. I don't see even a single feather on Nino. Maria didn't know what to say. Could it really have been just a dream? Then Nino stood up, and Pablo gave a shout. Maria, look at Nino's tail! And Maria's heart gave a great leap. It wasn't a dream after all.